I had two jobs my senior year of college. I worked as a graphic artist, and I worked in the campus art gallery. Now, more than 30 years later, I'm doing the very same thing. I own and operate a fine art gallery and graphic design studio in small town America. As a child, I used to draw and paint pictures for my grandmother. It's amazing how one person's encouragement can affect a life. I often wonder what she'd think if she could see what I was doing now. I wonder why you never hear the term starving accountant, starving lawyer, starving doctor, starving food preparation worker, starving customer service representative, starving auditor, starving operations manager, starving executive administrative assistant, starving tractor trailer truck driver. It's always starving artist. Why is that? Well, not today. Bruce and Brenda Stichter have become great friends of ours here at the gallery. They're always ready to help when we need them. And I tell you, Bruce and his staff down at the bowling alley make the best cheeseburgers in town. Now this is where the real fun begins. That is cool. <laughs> now, then I'm going to flip it 180 degrees. I'm going to put it right here. Stuff is falling off. It's awesome. It's dripping. I love it. When it comes to an illustration project like this, the photo reference is crucial. And although building the model was a lot of fun, it won't last very long, especially with hungry boys in the studio. I think their favorite part of the cheeseburger was the cheeseburger. <laughs> Thank you.
murder. Now that the model has been created and photographed, it's time for some digital modification. Since the model was photographed on all sides in the same lighting, we can expand our cheeseburger from six patties to as high as we want. For no particular reason, I chose to alter it to nine patties. So long after the original model has been digested, this reference will remain consistent. With a mechanical pencil, I use a transfer method to draw the basic lines onto my illustration board, a process that goes fairly quickly. I have very vivid memories from my childhood going to the Madison Heights Public Library with my dad, where he introduced me to the artwork of America's most beloved painter, Norman Rockwell. I became a big fan of his work, and he became my biggest artistic influence. One of my favorite Rockwell paintings was his triple self-portrait. It showed three different sides of the self-proclaimed illustrator. It wasn't until later that I paid much attention to the upper right corner of his canvas where he had pinned four self-portraits of other artists that had influenced him. The largest one being that of the Dutch master painter, Rembrandt van Rijn. Rockwell was once asked who his favorite artist was. Without hesitation, he answered, there is no doubt, Rembrandt. No surprise, he became another great influence of mine as well. As a Christian, I am especially drawn to his portrayals of Jesus Christ. For this piece of art, I have chosen to use a Rembrandt technique. The initial stage is the longest and most tedious as the artwork is totally rendered as a monochromatic drawing using a PC-947 Dark Umber Prismacolor colored pencil. What I've done in essence is created a highly detailed and shaded coloring page and now it's time to color. My medium of choice, house paint.
I rarely use paint right out of the can. Part of the challenge is to mix just the right color you need using just a few basic colors. Now it's time to really have some fun, adding layer upon layer of shadows and highlights before adding all the final details. I find it to be true, and other artists might share the same sentiment, that when you are involved in the creative process, you find yourself in a place that transcends reality. It's like an escape into another dimension. In those moments, making focused, split-second decisions with each brush stroke, decisions only you can make, you find yourself in a place of peace. As you experience a painting, as it develops, it makes you want to find yourself in that place more and more. Like a dancer who gets lost in the dance, a songwriter who gets lost in music and lyrics, or a potter molding a ball of clay into a beautiful work of pottery. I feel it's where I belong, where I feel most where I was created to be, doing what God created me to do. Looking at a finished work of art for the very first time is a timeless moment for the artist. Then it's on to start the process all over again, longing for that final brush stroke once more. Owning an art gallery and design studio, I get the chance to be inspired by great works of art every day. I love to study the paintings, look close at the brush strokes, and just soak it all in. Still some might ask, why the cheeseburger? What's the significance? Is it just about food? Or does it convey some kind of deep meaning, an underlying philosophy? To me, this cheeseburger is larger than life. It reaches far beyond the norm. And for me, I want it to be a reminder. That's what I want my life to be, larger than life. I know I'm no Norman Rockwell, no Rembrandt. My works, they're not masterpieces. I understand that. But I'm just happy to be me, and I enjoy creating works of art 
even if they are oversized cheeseburgers. And I'm thankful for the creative talent that God has given to me. But in the end, I'm an artist. Therefore, I must make art. Honey, are you hungry?